In this series, I want to break down what different Forge utilities are doing on your server. My hope is that you can use this information if you're troubleshooting one of these utilities, or maybe if you decide to cancel your Forge subscription and manage your servers on your own, it's going to be important to understand what it's actually doing for you. So jumping in, in this video, we're going to be doing a dive into the daemons feature. Daemons are used to keep long running scripts alive on your server. For example, if you're using something like Laravel queues, you'll want a daemon to run the command php artisan queue work. And as you can see in this example, that's the only daemon I currently have running on this server. So what I want to understand, if I were to disconnect from Forge, where is this information on my server? And where we're going to find this, let me switch over to command line, currently SSH'd into my server. And I'm going to move into my etc supervisor conf.d directory. All right, this is the directory where all of our daemon config files are. Uh, and it's under a directory called supervisor because that is the underlying utility on our servers that the uh, Forge daemon interface is controlling. It's just this supervisor program. So looking at the directory contents, we can see we've got one config file. And if we look at the contents of this con uh, config file, we should see that all the information in here corresponds to what we were seeing in the Forge interface. For example, we see the command, which in this case, it's an artisan queue work command, the directory it's gonna run in, the user will run as, and the number of processes. Going back to the config, we see all that information. So here is the command information. Here's the directory it runs in, number of processes, and then finally the user it runs as. Um, now there are some other settings reflected in the config file. And these settings, some of them were set when we first created this daemon in Forge. If we look at the settings uh, to create a new daemon, we could specify things like start seconds, stop seconds, the stop signal, all of that gets written to the config file. Uh, and if you're working in the Forge interface, the way you would uh, change that after a daemon's already created is uh, if you click this little settings icon, you can actually bring up the uh, config file that we were just looking in command line and make those changes directly here. Now, at this point, I do want to highlight the note they have up top that talks about manual adjustments to your config files may not be reflected in this version that we're seeing here. Uh, and this is important to realize in this video, I'm not suggesting that you sometimes edit your configs via Forge and you sometimes edit them via uh, directly SSHing into the server because that can create some synchronization issues. This video is really thinking about people who are going to be uh, canceling their Forge subscription and therefore wouldn't have access to this interface. I want you to understand where these files and how to edit them uh, behind the scenes are. All right, so knowing that moving forward, let's imagine we disconnect from Forge. We don't have this nice interface to work with. Let's talk about, well, how would we create new daemons? Well, the first step is simply just to create a new configuration file. And the way I will do that is just duplicating my existing uh, daemon that I have and adapting it as needed. Uh, if you don't have an existing daemon and you're looking to create one for the first time, uh, if you go uh, to the notes that accompany this video, I do have output of this example daemon. So you could copy it here and use that as your starting point. But like I said, in my case, I'm just going to copy my existing daemon. So here's the name of that. And we're going to do a copy. I am going to prefix this with sudo. Uh, everything within this directory is owned by root and is going to require super user privileges. So we'll prefix it with sudo. We'll do a copy of that file. And then for the name of the new file, we'll follow the same pattern for how Forge named these config files where we're going to prefix it with daemon. And then we need some unique identifier. They use numerical values. You could follow that same pattern or you could just name it after uh, the process that you're going to be running. It doesn't really matter just as long as each config file has a unique name. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to call it demo.config. And with that copy created, let's open it up. I'm just going to use nano here just to quickly edit this. And the first thing I want to change is the name of the program itself. So I want this to match the name of the config file. So I'll change that to daemon demo. Next, I want to change the directory that the uh, command is going to be invoked in. Uh, and for this demo, I'm going to change it to uh, my code with Susan site. Um, I'm not currently using the Laravel queue system in there, but it's not going to hurt to run the queue process uh, just for the purposes of this example. All right, the command I'm going to leave it as is uh, just that artisan queue work command. And then the last thing I want to customize is just the name of the log file. I want it to match the name of the program itself. So let's change that. And then I'm going to leave all these other values as the default. Um, I will include a link in the video description to the supervisor documentation if you want to learn more about any of these particular settings if you need to customize them. Uh, but for this demo, I think this file looks good. So I'm going to save my changes. And now I'll do that by holding down Control X 
typing the letter Y and hitting enter. And then with that file created, there are two commands I need to run to get my supervisor system to recognize this new daemon. The first is going to be supervisor control reread. And then after that, we're going to run update. So you can see the outputs of that. It recognized this new daemon and then it added it. And so now if we run supervisor control status, we should see two processes running. The first is the daemon that had been already set up in Forge. And then here's the demo one that I just created. The other thing we could check just to make sure everything's working as expected is our log file. And you can see the log files is in our home Forge directory in this uh, hidden Forge directory. So let's change into that directory. Look at our contents. We've got a log file for our uh, originally Forge created daemon. And then here's one for our demo daemon. So let's look at its contents. And perfect, that's the output uh, we expect from that artisan queue command. So that's the process for setting up a new daemon. Uh, if you wanted to delete a daemon, you would basically reverse that process. Uh, so uh, let's go back into our config directory. We'll go ahead and remove our demo config. And let me try that again with pseudo privileges. And then once again, we'll run our reread and our update commands. And we can see that demo was removed, but just to check things out, let's run status. And then we're back to just our original daemon. And with that, that's the fundamentals of working with a supervisor and this daemon system. Basically, we just learned how to do all of the things that Forge is doing for us. Uh, we could just do it manually. If you want to learn more about other Forge features and how they're working under the hood, I'll include a link to the playlist for the series on the screen now. And if there's a particular topic you want to see me dig into, feel free to leave a comment below.